How's it going guys? Welcome to my brand new workshop. Now, I'll give you a full in-depth tour of it once everything's all set up and looking nice, but I've been feeling sick recently, and I don't mean sick of the flu, which I did have about a week ago. I mean sick of not making videos. I have been moving into this new house. Uh, my whole family has been um, and I'm really really glad that we did because this is like a really cool house But I haven't had a single second to work on videos So I really don't feel like waiting until I have better lighting to do this one Sorry if you really care about that kind of stuff, but I really just want to get back on like good medicine So today we're going to be revisiting the spear now if you saw my last spear video You remember that the spear worked absolutely perfectly right up until the point where it broke in half that was definitely the uh, low point in this Spears YouTube career. But the reason why it broke in half was because I used pine for the shaft. It was the first time I'd ever used pine for anything really. I didn't really know anything about pine, but now I know something about pine. Now I did want to remake the spear at some point, but the real reason why I'm revisiting the spear is because uh, one of the leaders of my church is doing a Spartan race pretty soon, which I assume is like a, like a Tough Mudder with a Spartan theme, because at some point in the race they have to uh, throw a spear at a bale of hay, and if they miss, then they have to do 30 burpees. Now I burped the ABCs one time and I threw up in my mouth, and that's only 26 burpees, so I can't imagine having to do 30 burpees. So when he came to me and asked if I had a spear that he could practice with, of course I was happy to oblige. But I Obviously I can't be making another one of these seven and a half foot long spears for him to practice with. I gotta make something a little more similar to what he's gonna be using in the actual race. So here's what I got. I bought this six dollar shovel from Home Depot, but what I'm really after is this little section of pipe on the scoop right here. Now the reason why I bought a whole shovel instead of just getting a little piece of pipe uh, is because I'm actually gonna use the scoop for a different build and then this is good wood for handles. So this was a good buy for me, just getting all these different materials at the same time. And then for the shaft of the spear, I'm not gonna use this because this this would end up just being really really short. Uh, I went ahead and I bought a replacement handle for a rake or a hoe. Haha, uh -huh. hoe. I got this edger blade that I'm going to convert into the spearhead. I got some orange juice in case I get thirsty. Freaking hate pulp. A guy's got a poo and a guy's got a poo. And then I've got a four inch long size 20D nail. And then lastly, as far as the building, I got some of this gorilla epoxy. But if you want to make the spear look nice too, in addition to being functional and everything, you're just going to need like some wood stain and some polyurethane for coating it. All right, firstly, you got to yank out these little nails that are holding the scoop onto the handle. Use an angle grinder to cut the pipe off and make sure you don't get any of this curve in it. It may be a little hard to see on camera right now, but just use a sharpie to draw the design for your spear out onto your lawnmower blade. And once you're happy with the design, just cut it out with the angle grinder. Mm. Well, that sucks. Dang! Well, luckily, pretty much everything I needed okay lighting for is now finished. So now all I have to do is take this rough spearhead and I'm going to clean up the edges on the belt sander and then I'm also going to put a bevel on the edge. how the spearhead looks with the bevel. Now I'm going to get to work on removing this black paint and running the belt sander horizontally on the tang of the spearhead. It should look something like this. Now when you drag your fingernail across the tang like this, there should be an audible scratching noise. If you can't hear a scratching noise, then it's not adequately roughed up and the epoxy is not going to have anything to hold on to. Now in an ideal world, I'd have a sweet forge set up to be able to evenly heat up this whole blade to non-magnetic temperatures, at which point I would quench it in some heat treating oil and I'd be married and I'd have a $5,000 heat treating oven to temper this thing in. But here in real life, I've got this little propane torch, uh, speaker, a bowl of motor oil, and a toaster oven, but luckily I am married. Oh wait, never mind. So because the little propane torch can't really sufficiently heat up the whole entire blade, I'm only really going to be able to heat treat about the top inch of the blade, but I mean this thing's getting thrown into bales of hay, not the Persian army. Any sort of heat treating on this is kind of just extra credit. So I'm just going to take the torch and heat up the tip until it doesn't stick to this little magnet anymore. Then I'm going to plunge it into the motor oil, and after that I'll start the process of the toaster tempering.
wash off the oil with some Dawn dish soap and then we have to sand off this color right here even though it does look pretty cool. Uh, but we have to see the true color of the steel for the tempering. And make sure you sand off the color by hand with some sandpaper and not using a belt sander because that'll cause this to generate heat and will mess with the heat treat that you just did. Now we're going to take this and put this into the toaster oven at about 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, from all the other videos on like how to heat treat knives, from what I can tell, the time that you have to have it in there really varies a lot, like from anywhere between an hour to four hours. I assume this all just has to do with the thickness of the blade and whatever, but from what I can see, the general rule of thumb is that your blade is done tempering when it reaches like a golden wheat color. So I guess just go find a piece of golden wheat and when the colors are similar, then you're done. All right, they've got warm, broil, bake, toast, where's spearhead? All right, it's 2.30 a.m. The max timer on this thing is 30 minutes. So while that's cooking, I guess I'm just going to remove the polyurethane coating on this rake handle so I'll be able to stain it myself uh, and then just reset this every time it goes off. All right, I got the poly coat off of it, but only after that did I realize that the factory taper on this thing is actually kind of crooked. You can see it's straight on this side and here it's slanted and not just that, and the tip right here, there's a hole that goes all the way down to this dent right here, and that's not good for business. So I'm gonna have to cut off the whole tip right here and just taper it myself. Now that I got all the polyurethane stripped, I'm going to apply some wood stain and then my own polyurethane. And after one hour at 450 degrees, I think the temper turned out pretty good. But as cool as this temper sort of looks, it doesn't really match the style that I'm going for with this particular spear. So I am going to have to sand it off, but I don't see any functional problem with leaving the color on there. But I'm sure if there's somebody watching this video who knows if there is a problem, they would be happy to let everybody know in the comment section. Alright, I didn't think about this before, but I'm actually going to have to round out this end that I tapered. And I'm also going to have to sand off a little bit of the polyurethane so that the epoxy so you can soak into the wood grain. Then once that's taken care of, you gotta cut a line down the middle of the stick for the blade to rest in. I'm gonna use my bandsaw, but you can use a jigsaw or a hacksaw. But because the bandsaw blade isn't wide enough that it would be able to cut a line wide enough that the blade would be able to fit into it, what I'm gonna have to do is drill this hole right here that's the same diameter as the thickness of the blade, and then I'm gonna have to cut two lines from the tip to the hole. Uh, spaced out the exact same width as the blade. All right, now I'm gonna mix up some epoxy, spread it onto the part of the stick that I stripped, and then I'm going to slide the tube onto the stick. And then as quickly as I can, I'm also gonna spread some epoxy onto the tang of the blade, and then tap the blade into this line. All right, we're almost done. Next step is to drill a few holes so we can get to work on the rivets. one hole going through the hole that was already in the tube from the shovel and then I've got two more going through the tang of the blade. So then I put a nail through the hole and then I cut it off so that there's about two millimeters coming out of the other end. Now I take a ball peen hammer and I round out that end of the nail so that it looks more like this so it'll be fixed in there. Just place one end of the nail onto a solid metal surface like the anvil on a vise or a barbell plate or something like that and then just hammer away. done it should look like this and with the last rivet in there that's it for the construction you can just leave it like this but I'm gonna give it a quick paint job to turn it from this into this when it comes to throwing the size is a lot more manageable this time around all right I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, sorry I look all slimy right now it's 90 degrees out here and it's so humid that I can't even tell if I'm walking or swimming. Really quick, I know I haven't said this kind of stuff in a long time, so I'm kind of scared that I'm gonna jinx it or something, but I don't think it was my first build video, but it was one of the really, really early ones that I mentioned to you guys that if, uh, if each one of you guys were to share the video one time, that my views would be doubled. That's still completely true today. And then just imagine what would happen if each one of you guys shared the video more than one time, you know? Ever since way back in the day when I very first decided that I without a doubt wanted to be a professional YouTuber, I have not a single time, and I'm not, I'm not just saying that to be sentimental, I literally have not a single time 
thought to myself, you know what, maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to do. Like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe this is too much work and not enough return. I mean, I, I went and I got a job at Chipotle, but that was just so that I could like buy materials so that I could make videos for you guys. I've gone through working 10 hours at Chipotle to come home to work five hours on videos. I've gone through late nights. I've gone through entire nights and it's been quite a fight, but I want to be able to keep on fighting for you guys. It would be really awesome if you could help me do that. So if you guys can, it would be really, really cool if you could share the video. Yeah, that's all I got for today. So thank you guys very, very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.